All right, guys, we've got some more PC gaming tech related news that interests me, bringing it to you on my breaks. <laughs> All right, as my subscribers are used to, links to everything will be in the description to the video. Well, one thing I'm interested in is that Intel, you know, is making inroads into the discrete uh, GPU market. And uh, we do have another leak where we see some scores showing up on Geekbench. Now, this one's not one to get super excited about. Number one is that according to its specs, this is clearly going to be one of the very low end models. So this is a 128 compute units, three gigabytes of VRAM and a 1.4 gigahertz processor. So this is, um, if it is one of their uh, discrete gaming GPUs, which it could be, this is gonna be one of the lowest end models. And also the score that it received, which was 9,311, which by itself doesn't mean much, is not a very good score, even compared to Intel's own integrated graphics based on the XE architecture. Um, which I think we've seen, uh, do they report on that in this article? Uh, if I jump over to the, uh, WCCF Tech has a, another uh, article about this, and I think they compare it to the, um, yeah, their notebook score, um, which can score actually higher in this same test. So in this same test, the um, that one's able to get around 15,000, despite the fact that it has fewer execution units and, and such, all of that. The point is, um, this doesn't really tell us a whole lot other than this is probably some kind of an engineering sample that maybe doesn't even have finalized drivers, which would explain its really low scores. So yeah, you know, I wish there was a little more to this. I wish we were seeing a higher end thing, but I am extremely interested in getting uh, Intel in there as a player in the GPU market, even if they're not challenging at the high end at first, um, maybe they could shake things up a bit and help out with prices. I think more competition is good in all of these situations. Now, if you've been following my channel, I've been interested in the smart access memory situation, which again, the quick summary is um, CPUs normally can only address a portion of the GPU's memory buffer at a time, but this smart access memory opens that up to address the entire thing but when it, uh, it's basically just a resizable bar feature which should support more things, more platforms than what AMD said it would at first with just their 500 series motherboards, 5000 series processors and 6000 series GPUs. Since then, we've seen a lot of other motherboards, um, even the 400 series motherboards enabling this, even some Intel platforms, but the question has been, okay, if you can get it up and running with earlier generation uh, motherboards, how about earlier generation Ryzen CPUs and earlier generation um, graphics cards rather than the 6000 series? Well, apparently we do have somebody who got this up and running, but uh, it didn't score particularly well, at least in the games this person tested it on. Now they had an RX 580, so they're not using the 6000 series um, graphics card. And they were, uh, like I said, on the first gen Ryzen uh, 1700. And there was a small within the margin of error increase. Um, if you actually compare them this way, uh, WCCF tech has made a nice graph out of all this data that was released. So basically the final result is the average frames per second went up less than 1% on the Tomb Raider benchmarks and the frame rate minimums went down significantly. So overall, I would actually consider this worse performance because even though you have slightly better, um, but uh, almost unnoticeable better frame rate, you're losing a lot on your minimums. So there seems to be some kind of an issue here. And I'm curious whether that issue is with the CPU or the GPU or both uh, not being um, you know, able to really fully take advantage of that. Now, I'm curious if any of you guys have a 400 series motherboard and like an older Ryzen processor, but maybe a 6,000 series GPU. I would like to see this tested 
using the 6000 series GPU, but on one of the older Ryzen's and seeing how well it can handle that. I'd love to see that. Let me know in the comments if you have a setup where you could test that. Remember, you'd probably just need to update your BIOS uh, on your 400 series board, and many of those boards are currently supporting smart access memory. So that'd be an interesting thing to try out. Now that's mostly what I've got for you on the PC hardware side of things, but I do also follow uh, some console stuff. Personally, I have a Nintendo Switch. I love it. Uh, I think it's a great companion to a PC in the sense that it's very different. It has different games. It has different uh, features. You know, it's portable, but can also plug into the TV. It's good for my kids, that kind of a thing. Uh, however, I really wish it had a 1080p screen um, <laughs> rather than 720p. And I wish that when I plugged it into my TV, it could at least upscale to 4K. And there's been a lot of rumors about there being a Switch Pro that would have those types of features. You know, it does use NVIDIA, which could have the DLSS 2.0 if they did a refresh uh, that could enable better upscaling, that kind of a thing. However, uh, since a lot of those rumors were going on, we've got some information from uh, Nintendo's Doug Bowser. Yeah, Bowser. <laughs> uh, which basically has this long quote. You could read this in, in the description if you'd like or pause the video here. But basically he's saying, because the current models they have with the normal Switch and the Switch Lite are so successful right now and have such momentum, huge sales, they're gonna be focusing on those platforms and do not have uh, any immediate plan of bringing out a Switch Pro. So, you know, I'm kind of hoping he's just lying <laughs> and that there is one coming out soon. Um, but they, they're specifically stating, we believe we're just at the midpoint of the life cycle on this platform. Now, to me, you don't have to end the life cycle of those platforms to release an updated version with better graphics that still plays the exact same games, like just capable of upscaling more and maybe had a 1080p screen. I'd love to see that. But this, does, this is kind of putting a damper on that. Um, also, kind of on the console side of things, but related to things going on in the PC business as well, we've seen articles about US, uh, UK, sorry, not US, UK politicians calling for action against scalping. So basically, if we look into some of the quotes here, uh, they're uh, releasing a motion to bring this to debate in parliament. Now, I'm not an expert on what exactly all of that means uh, in the UK side of things. Uh, but yeah, basically they're gonna bring this up as an issue to talk about. And they're saying that new releases of gaming consoles and computer components should be available to all customers at no more than the manufacturer's recommended retail price and not be bought in bulk by the use of automated bots, which often circumvent maximum purchase quantities imposed by the retailer. Uh, it says that action banning bots would deny unscrupulous vendors the chance to make themselves vast profits at the expense of genuine gamers and computer users, while also deterring fraudulent cyber criminal activity. Now, I'd be all for something like this, and it's not unprecedented, um, given the fact that I, th I think in many countries, scalping tickets, right? Scalping tickets is already illegal. And this would just change that to include gaming consoles. Now, wouldn't it be nice if it also included graphics cards, right? Uh, anyway, who knows if anything will actually come out of this, but that's interesting, and I think a step in the positive direction, <laughs> in my opinion. And the last thing I'll bring up here, uh, since ray tracing has been an issue lately, is that some absolute mad lad um, out there has apparently enabled <laughs> ray tracing on the Super Nintendo. Um, I haven't seen all the details on how exactly <laughs> that works, but there is a video here uh, which kind of demonstrates what that could look like. Interesting, um, kind of fun to play with, but obviously not, uh, <laughs> probably not some amazing thing everybody's gonna be using, but certainly interesting. All right, links to everything in the descriptions. My next class is about to get started. I better go get that class going, and I hope you guys have an excellent day.